Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you've had an awesome Christmas or holiday break. Um, today I thought it would be kind of cool and maybe be interesting for you guys to go through all of the layers that go together uh, to make one of my digital portraits. Um, this particular one is a self-portrait I did a couple of years ago. You guys would have seen it because I was throwing it in your faces during the Wake Up The Next Level exhibition. Um, and I thought seeing as you had to see it so often uh, against your will, maybe it would be nice to show you guys what goes into making up a portrait like that. I recorded this whole thing and then realized when I was going to edit it that I had recorded the wrong screen. So you could hear me talking, but you couldn't see any of this. So let's try and do this properly this time. Um, so normally I will start out with a really rough sketch, just a layout sketch, trying to work out where I want things. Um, I didn't save that layer annoyingly. Uh, so the next layer I would do on top of that is the you know, a bit nicer line sketch. If this was going to be visible uh, properly on top of all of the color layers, I would have done it a lot neater. This is a little bit messy, but it's, you know, it's not gonna be particularly visible by the end of it. So it doesn't really matter too much. It just needs to be neat enough that I know where to put all of the things. <laughs> um, as you can see, I went back in on this a little bit later and just removed some of the darkness from certain parts. It would have just been a little bit too obvious through the rest of the coloring and I just wouldn't, you know, I would want to knock it back a little bit. I've already noticed a mistake I've made here. I haven't drawn in the rest of my earring. Let's pretend we didn't notice that. Um, this layer is up a little bit, as you can see on the side here from the bottom. Um, it's the first layer I did, but then I would have added layers underneath these ones here that I wanted to have the line work visible on top of. So let's go back to those. This first layer is um, a t-shirt that I actually scanned in, one of my t-shirts. Um, I thought that would be a cool touch. Uh, just scanned it in and placed it down on the bottom, bottom, bottom layer. Um, and then the next layer in, I added some texture. Uh, if you know any of my artworks, you know I love adding splatters to everything. Uh, and this is no exception. I will do this traditionally and digitally. Uh, this is a handmade brush for Photoshop that I use um, almost all of the time. And the next layer is that exact same t-shirt layer. It's just a copy of it, um, just to go on top there to be a little bit more obvious as the physical shirt. And then the final background layer, I guess we could call it, is just a, a shape um, just to, I wanted sort of a graphic border type thing happening um, and as you can see I've added some extra splatters in there because I love splatters. <laughs> the next layer on top of the line work is just the blocking in of the hair. Um, this is the very very first time I ever did grayscale under color. Uh, I, I'm now obsessed with it and it's the way that I do these realistic portraits. Um, it's good because it allows you to block in uh, all of the shading and get the right tones without worrying about color. And then you can go in on top of it and color those like essentially stain even. Like it's like staining something. You stain the, the gray to be the color you want it to be. Uh, the next layer is the skin. Unfortunately, I would have this would have been a whole heap of layers on its own. Uh, but as you can see on the side here, there are a heck of a lot of layers left to go and the file size at this point would have been quite large and my computer would have started struggling on it. I was actually using uh, my little Wacom companion at the time and it doesn't have that much memory so I would have had to flatten all of those just to save some space. Uh, it's literally just a flat round brush, just one of these that would have been used. Um, and it was literally just placed down, as you can see, uh, quite messily. You can see here I didn't bother blending it uh, or anything like that. And a few layers might have been done with the opacity turned right down, just to blend a little bit, but uh, just, just, just messy. Doesn't need to be too obvious, it just needs to block in all of that 3D shading. And this layer, I don't know if you guys saw that, was just getting rid of one of those line works that I thought was just a little bit too obvious. Um, I thought it made the nose dip in a bit further at the top there than it actually does. Uh, this is just getting rid of some more of this line work that I thought was a little bit obvious. 
just wanted to knock that back so it wasn't, you know, just glaringly the first thing you look at when you look at the portrait. Uh, these are, my favorite things are highlights, so I added in a few highlights. I will have to go back over these um, towards the end as well. But it sort of helps me just see, you know, like the second that those highlights come in in the eyes, it brings the portrait to life. Um, so why the heck not? <laughs> and now I'm just adding in the textures for the hair. Um, this is just many, many tiny round brush layers again, just the same brush that I used for the skin tone. And you can see that they're on like a low opacity here. So that is how I do the basic hair. <laughs> um, that's obviously looking very uh, computer generated at this point. It's not messy at all. My hair certainly doesn't look like that normally. So I added in some messy sort of just fly away bits. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know at this point, being the first time I've done this, that that wasn't really where I should have added those. Um, when I went in to colour them, as you could probably guess, it's really difficult to adjust colour, you know, that little stroke and not get any of the skin in as well. Normally, and now, now when I do these, now that I know, um, I go in and do those flyaways much later on in the colour stage. Alright, so now we're starting to get into colour. Uh, this bottom layer was actually added later, so let's go to this one first. This is the first skin tone layer. This is a soft light layer, as you can see up here. It's a soft light there. I'll show you what it looks like on a normal layer. Ah, <laughs> terrifying! Um, so literally it's just that, it's just a normal brush, um, round brush again, and then we just pop it on a soft light layer here, and that allows it to see the uh, shading and stuff underneath from the grayscale. Unfortunately, my skin tone hasn't got enough pigment or isn't dark enough to hide the fact that there is gray underneath there, so I added this layer underneath, which is a color layer, just to make it pop a little bit more. Uh, we can still see all of that shading there, it's just adding a little bit of pigment in. And the next layer is just fixing up those eyes. Uh, I hadn't really done much with them, so just defining the shadows. Um, there is a lot of pink, if you don't know, to the shadowing of an eyeball. <laughs> so add a little bit of that. I will go back in a bit later and add some more. Um, the next two layers were added in after this layer, so I'll show you this one first. This is just the first colour stage for the hair, and I sort of noticed that this was all looking a bit sparse around this area here, so I wanted to add a bit extra in, so I added those extra hairs, hair sections, hairs, in there, and then just some shadow work underneath that which wasn't in the uh, grayscale layer. I also decided that this section was going to be a lot darker in the eye area than I had really thought about previously, so I've just added some extra shadows in that section as well, just preempting adding lots of shadows to that side afterwards. And this section here, I decided that the uh, regrowth <laughs> wasn't quite obvious enough. I hadn't made it light enough here in the grayscale area, so I've just added in some extra on top. That's a lighten layer, so that lightens the area that you are drawing over just to make that a little bit more obvious. And this section here, um, I hadn't made the grayscale layer quite dark enough, so that has colour on it there, but obviously it's just not um, visible enough with the uh, soft light layer, so just adding a bit extra in there, that's a multiply layer which makes everything under a little bit darker, just so you can see the colours. Um, just adding in the flyaways, which this is what I should have done to begin with, um, with just a very tiny round brush. And there will be a lot more of those layers to come. And now I'm adding in the pinks. So this is uh, my favourite stage of any portrait. I just feel like it brings the person to life in your picture. Um, so you add them in, or I personally add them in like around the eyes, the nose, around your lips, chin, cheeks, your ear, um, your knuckles, uh, under your hand here. Um, I tend to add them on shoulders. 
and in just like this little collarbone area here as well, just two little dots. Um, if you could see things like the uh, elbows, the, the tips of the elbows would have color on them as well. And if it was a gentleman that I was drawing, I tend to do a little, just a little bit of pink on the Adam's apple as well, just to bring that out a little bit more. And then another layer on top of that, this is another multiply layer, um, just to make that pink around the mouth a little bit more obvious. Also on this layer, um, I added some purple under the eyes. I have um, chronic fatigue, so that's what this artwork was about. And uh, I have, when I don't have makeup on, quite dark sort of purple circles, ready purple circles under my eyes. So that's on that layer as well. And then the next layer, I'm just adding a little bit extra to that. And then we're getting into the shadows. So I love using colors in my shadow work. Um, some people like using just a darker version of whatever color they're going over the top of or even some people use like a warm gray that's sort of in like a multiply layer um, but yeah me personally I love using purples and blues and sometimes even greens uh, so this first shadow layer here is purple and it's literally just a soft light layer again uh, because I already have all of that awesome shading work down in this grayscale layer I actually don't have to do too much work here I'm just coloring the shadows. Normally, if I was just doing a uh, portrait and I'm just doing color straight away, um, I would have to make that a multiply layer so it was actually adding darkness to the tone as well. And just adding a little bit of a darker purple as well, just to define those, still a soft light layer, but just to define those shadows a little bit more. And then uh, I realized that that was bringing the artwork like the skin tone um making it quite sort of what's the word sallow <laughs> it was making the me look quite unwell um the pinks and stuff weren't as popping as they should be so i just added another layer there just adding in some extra pinks and um, a few little highlights just to bring uh things out of the shadows a little bit and then the next layer is blue so these are blue shadows, as you can see, they are a lot more obvious than the purple. The purple, because it has such a warm tone to it, or at least more of a warm tone than the blue, is complementary to the skin colour, whereas this blue is quite contrasting. And these are the uh, blue shadows on the hair. Um, I decided at that point, as you can see, it's not very obvious because the hair's already quite blue, so I ended up adding a darker purple instead on top of that again and that I felt was a little bit better um, it just because the hair is so dark already it wasn't really noticeable at the levels of shadow I was adding to the skin tone so adding a darker color to the hair brings it together and makes it look like one cohesive piece and then because I put in so much dark I decided I needed it and it's quite messy as you can see like how messy this area is down here and stuff so just added another layer on top uh, and also up here you can see like just just defining some hair so it looks like hair and not a flat sort of layer. Uh, this one is just defining the eyes again, adding some more of those pinks in. Um, I wanted them to sort of pop a little bit more than they were after the shadows so adding those on a soft light layer just sort of brought the pinks out again just made it a little bit more obvious to look at but then I needed to bring in some shadows again just so that they weren't like you know glowing eyeballs <laughs> and also just adding some textures into the irises here and that is on a multiply layer so I am actually adding some darkness and shadows to that area because I've sort of gone over the uh the gray a little bit too much there and I've lost some of the darkness that I had and now I'm starting to add some textures in uh, it might not be too obvious here you can watch these areas here you'll see just a little bit of texture a little bit down here and then of course when we zoom out you'll see that the hair has more definition I don't know why I put those layers together um, probably again just to save space uh, but just defining the hair a little bit more and then the next layer here is uh, more texture stuff um, I have tiny little freckles that used to be way more obvious when I was a kid 
Um, and I love freckles, so I you, you don't need to give me an excuse to add any kind of freckles to anything. Um, so that's this layer here, just, just a little bit of texture. Um, and it's not just on the face, I've got on the shoulders as well, just, just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of texture there. And then the next layer is one that I think I just wasn't sure. I must have added this layer down and then um, gotten distracted. And when I came back to this, I couldn't remember if I'd added something to this layer and I couldn't see anything that I was worried, you know, like doing this, you can't see anything, but I was worried it was something really subtle. And if I deleted it, I'd be annoyed with myself later when I realized. So I just left it and went to this layer here. So this layer is again, adding some more texture to the skin. As you can see, if you watch sort of the, the T-zone area of my face here, and literally all this is, if you have a look at it on normal, is the same skin tone, base skin tone that I've used. And then I've just put it on a multiply layer, which obviously makes it darker, just to add a little bit of texture in there. Because I don't know about you guys, but my skin isn't particularly, um, you know, baby smooth without makeup on or anything like that. And that was the whole point of this. I love uh, the, I just, I just love, um, I don't know if it's faults. Faults aren't the word that I want. You've heard me talk about this a million times, but yeah, I really like just seeing um, realness in portraits. And this is the same thing, just adding some more texture. This is for the highlight layer, um, just defining that skin tone as not being, you know, robot smooth. <laughs> and um, some of my favorite things are adding these sort of speckled highlights in. There's also highlights that will go in here later, which I love doing as well. They just seem to make the uh, the person real, you know? And then this layer is the hair again. We're adding some more definition um, because I'd added, you can see these two layers here, because I'd added a lot of shadow work in here and you can see it still looks quite flat. I've lost all of that lovely um, sort of hair stroke work that I'd done in the grayscale layer. Um, I had to add it in again, and this is what I would have done on a higher layer if I realized uh, initially. So just going in with a very small round brush and just adding some extra hair strokes. Um, particularly this blue layer on top was at, you can see here, um, just a little bit of a lower opacity than full. You can see how much better it looks with those defined. And now we're going in with some more shadows on top of those, just to bring them down into the 3 d in, into the shape of the, uh, the rest of the hair. And some darker ones again. And these ones here, I just felt like um, I was losing the structure of the hair, so I added quite a dark layer. Now this is a highlight layer. Um, if you notice, it's not white. It's actually a pink color. You can see there. So um, I added the pink because I felt like the hair was not, um, I don't know if gelling is the word. Um, it wasn't feeling cohesive throughout the whole hair because obviously the color changes. Uh, so I thought it would be good to add some pink in up here because that would sort of, you know, connect the two areas and um, just added a little bit extra here. So that's an identical layer. I should have probably merged those together to save space, but I did not. And then this bit here is just adding some fine detail to all areas. Um, oh, as you can see, I've noticed that I haven't done that earring and I've drawn that in now. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just defining, you know, where the hair meets the scalp here. Um, this is all just a normal a normal layer, so this is just as is. You can see I've added in these little highlights here that I was talking about. Um, you know, just some definition, like you have a look down here, I'm getting rid of that, you know, really obvious line work. It's unnecessary. Um, just fixing up the nose, adding some of those highlights back into the eyes. Um, you know, all of that, all of that nice stuff that makes a portrait <laughs> and then the next layer is I noticed here was just looking a bit sparse or I don't know not even sparse just it looks odd 
messy and off. I didn't like it, so I just added some extra hair strokes in there. Same as all the other ones. And now we're getting back to defining this graphic border that I did at the start. Um, it's just easier for me at least. I feel like it's easier just to have something on top that way if I want to fix something or, you know, if I decide I want this, this layer to be lower, I can do that um, rather than commit to what I already have and then if at a later date I decided I actually wanted to see this part, I'd have to redraw it, which would be a massive pain. So that's just a white layer on top to cover that up and a signature because I thought I was done <laughs> and then I realized that I wasn't done because I hadn't defined the nose enough. Um, I'd done all this like shadowing everywhere else and it just it got lost on this nose and it was looking really flat and odd so just adding in some purple layers there and then just fixing the nose up a little bit. When you get to this sort of point where it's looking pretty finished, um, it'll become more obvious to you mistakes you've made. So this is the point that I would suggest you go back and look at your reference. So if in this case I was looking in a mirror um, or if you have like a photo reference that you're using or anything like that, um, go back at this point and have a look and just see if there's any mistakes that you notice that you can then fix up before you're done. Uh, this is down the bottom here. Um, I decided that this sort of space here was much of nothing and if I'm getting it printed on A4 or A3 size, there's just this space down here that nothing's happening. So I just added these two extra graphic bits um, over the top. They don't need to be really obvious, just, just a little extra something. And finally, a watermark and a watermark. Just, uh, you know, if you've ever had your artwork stolen on the internet before, you'll understand. <laughs> and that's it, guys. Um, I hope that was useful, informative, interesting. Um, I'm sick of hearing the sound of my own voice, so I hope you guys are not sick of hearing the sound of my voice. Uh, I rambled a bit. I hope it was useful to you, though. Um, I wish I had recorded this uh, in the process of, but I guess it's kind of cool to see just the layers at work as well. If you liked this one, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any more ideas on stuff like this you'd like to see, like if there are any more digital artworks of mine that you want to see like the layers in, please let me know. I'm happy to do another one of these. Um, if you want to check out the rest of my videos and you like those, it'd be awesome if you want to subscribe. Um, I'd love to have you guys here. And of course, don't forget to press that little bell icon as well because that'll let you know when I'm posting. As most of you know, I am absolutely terrible at posting to a schedule. I have no idea when I'm going to post, so of course you guys are going to have no idea when I'm going to post and that little bell icon will let you know every time I post something so you don't miss out. If you want to see more of my artwork, you can find links down to all my social medias below. I update those daily. Um, I wish I could do that for YouTube, but there are not that many hours in the day. <laughs> um, and I, that's it, I guess. Yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic New Year's if I don't see you before then, or you don't hear me before then, I guess. Um, yeah, have a great New Year's. Be safe, don't do anything too crazy, and uh, I will see you in the New Year. Bye.